Ask unanimous consent to take Mr. Poe's place. Without objection. Without objection. Thank you. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, everybody in America is concerned about gas and oil prices. We all remember the long gas lines during the Carter administration, and, and this country made a commitment that, uh, and the government made a commitment that we would be independent as far as energy needs were concerned at some point in the not too distant future, and we were supposed to work toward that end. I'd like to give a report on where we stand because the American people are very, very concerned about high gas prices right now and the lack of oil. On May the 29th, the United States consumed as much oil as it will produce domestically all year. All the oil that we produce in the United States has been used up by May the 29th. That means from that date until January 2008 next year, we're now completely dependent upon politically unstable regions of the world such as the Persian Gulf, Nigeria, and Venezuela for our energy needs. And why is that? Because year after year, decade after decade, this country throws up more roadblocks, usually because of some environmental reason, to exploring for and utilizing domestic supplies of oil and natural gas. In the Anwar, for instance, it holds the single largest deposit of oil in the entire United States, and that's 10.4 billion barrels of oil, and it's more than double the pro proven reserves in the entire state of Texas, and almost half of the total pro proven reserves in the United States, which is 22 billion barrels. To put it more simply, opening the ANWR could increase U.S. reserves by nearly 50 percent. And I've been up to the ANWR, and I can tell you there's no environmental damage that's going to take place if we drill in that area. And we could get between one and a half to two million barrels of oil a day. That would help a tremendous amount the needs of the American people. On the Outer Continental Shelf, another example as required by the Energy Policy Act of 2005, the Department of the Interior recently conducted a comprehensive in inventory of oil and natural gas resources located off of, our, off of our coastlines. According to the Department of Interior, there is an estimated 8.5 billion barrels of known oil reserves and 29.3 trillion cubic feet of known natural gas reserves along our coastlines, with 82 percent of the oil and 95 percent of the gas located in the Gulf of Mexico. However, even more importantly, the Department of the Interior estimates there are untapped resources of about 86 billion barrels, 51 percent in the Gulf of Mexico, and 420 trillion cubic feet of natural gas, 55 percent in the Gulf of Mexico, that's out there. In July 2004, a Spanish oil company, Repsol, YPF, in partnership with Communist Cuba's state oil company, Cupet, identified five oil fields it classified as high quality in the deep water of the Florida Straits, right off the coast of Florida, 20 miles northeast of Havana and within Cuba's exclusive economic zone. According to the U.S. Geological Survey, the North Cuba Basin holds an estimated 4.6 billion to 9.3 billion barrels of crude oil and 9.8 trillion to 21.8 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. Unfortunately, since the 1980s, the U.S. has prohibited oil and gas drilling on most of the outer continental shelf except for limited areas of the western Gulf of Mexico, not the Florida Straits or around Florida and limited parts of Alaska. Oil shale. There's enough oil shale in Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming to create the equivalent of 1.8 trillion, trillion barrels of oil and potentially as much as 8 trillion barrels of oil. In comparison, Saudi Arabia reportedly holds proven reserves of 267 billion, which is less than about uh, one-eighth of what we have in the United States in shale. Unfortunately, oil shale is roughly equivalent to diesel fuel and a number of Clean Air Act re regulations such as low sulfur diesel. Uh, Mr. Speaker, am I about out of time? I don't know how much time I have left. The gentleman has one minute remaining. One minute left. I don't want to belabor this point, but we have enough oil that we could move very closely to energy independence if we didn't have environmental radicals stopping us from drilling where we have the oil and we have those known oil reserves. It's tragic that we have to continue to rely on Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, and other countries that are very unstable in various parts of the world when we really know that at some point in the future we're going to need more and more of their oil. 
We need to move toward energy independence. We've been talking about it since the 80s. Nothing has been done, and now gas prices are going up because we aren't producing enough oil and gas in the United States, and we have the reserves there to do it. We haven't even built any new oil refineries for 30 years. We can't, even, we can't even refine the oil that we do get here in the United States to take care of all the needs of the American people. So I'd just like to say to my colleagues as I close, on both sides of the aisle, we need to start moving toward energy independence. We need to start thinking about economic concerns as well as environmental concerns and have a balance there. We can do it in an environmentally safe way, and the American people want us to do it, and we need to listen to them as well as the environmental lobby here in Congress. Gentlemen's time has expired.